2024 season, August the 31st at home against Grambling. They're represented today by head coach Michael Desermo and players A.J. Gilly, redshirt senior offensive lineman from Natchitoches, Louisiana, and K.C. Osai, senior linebacker from Conroe, Texas. We'll begin with opening remarks from Coach Desermo, and then we will take questions both for Coach and the student-athletes. Coach? Thank you, Dan. We were going to come in a thunderstruck, but we couldn't decide on a song, so we just went with the fight song. Figured that'd be the best for everybody. Um, you know, 2023 for us was, uh, you know, it was a year of, of near misses, a year of some highs and lows. Um, you know, at times a little bit disappointment and frustration. Um, but as you go through it, you know, ultimately it was a year of growth for us. Um, you know, we lost five games by one possession. Um, those are the difference, you know, the difference in finishing in the middle of the pack in this league and at the very top is how you handle these one possession games. Um, you're going to be in a lot of them, uh, you know, the best stretch we've ever had. You go 24 and two and we were 13 and one in one possession game. So they're going to happen. Uh, you got to handle them, manage it. And you got to find a way to come out and win and make plays in critical situations. Um, you know, some of our, our best wins were followed by some of, you know, the most disappointing losses. And I think for us as a team, uh, as a coach and staff, we've got to find a way day in and day out to get the consistency and performance for our players. I think it's understanding that every game that we play and every opportunity is as important as the next. Uh, when you look back at it, you know, I think it, the, little, the disappointment and the frustration comes in when you get to the midpoint and you're at four and two. You control your destiny. You've got everything in front of you. Uh, and certainly, we didn't finish the season the way that we needed to. Um, you know, I knew when I took this job, and we all understand the standards and expectations here to play for and win conference championships, and we embrace it. Uh, we've had a chance. We've been really close in a lot of these. Um, and for us, the growth comes from, I think, seeing our team accept that responsibility, seeing our coaching staff accept that we've got to continue to find ways to get better. We've got to continue find, to find ways to work with urgency. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that we've demanded since January um, across the board. We've had real conversations with each other as coaches, player to coach, coach to player, player to player, about the expectations and what we have to do to get where we want to go. Ultimately, we're very close to where we want to be. Um, for us, it's time to close the gap. And the gap is not very big. It's very attainable. Uh, I think increased urgency is the direction that you've got to go. When you're as close as where we've been to where you want to go, you got to tighten the screws and you got to do some of these things a little bit better. Um, I've seen our team grow this offseason and I've seen them attack these challenges head on. Um, I've seen our coaching staff become coach with more detail and teach with more attention to detail. Uh, our leadership on our team, including from these guys, has owned the accountability. Um, they've taken this thing and they've run with it. We've had a great offseason. I know everyone right now is excited about what's coming. We have a lot of work to do before August 31st. But for the first time in the last three years, we have a veteran team. We have experience back on both sides of the ball. We've got guys that have been in the fire. They know what it takes to win. Um, and certainly, they know how close we've been. And they know that it's going to take a little bit more from each and every one of us. So we're excited about this team that we've got coming back. Uh, I'm proud of the work that we've done so far, and I know it's put us in position to have an opportunity to go out there and play really good football in 2024 and get the Raging Cajuns back where we want to be. We'll now open the floor for questions. Once again, for all media members in attendance, please raise your hand for questions. A microphone will be brought to you. For those of you joining us on Zoom, please remain on mute. Type your questions into the chat. We'll read them here in the room. Hey, how's it going, guys? Jonathan Bulak, KLFY News and Sports. This is directed mainly to KC. So throughout the offseason, what's it been like to be with the new defensive coordinator, Jim Salgado? And what's his personality like? What have you been able to pick from him? And on top of that, what's it like being around him day to day? Uh, he's very refreshing, you know. He's a guy that harps on details, a guy that doesn't like gray area. And that's been refreshing to see as a defense because we need that as a defense. You can't, as a defense, if you, if you have great area or lack of communication in one play, it could lead to a touchdown. So that's been great just to see him um, come in and take charge of a defense that he, he's coming in halfway through the spring. So that was amazing to see. And just to see him do that, it was, it was amazing. Kevin Foote, Acadiana Advocate. Coach, we know you've got two very experienced quarterbacks that kind of at the top of the depth chart 
What about the receiving core from the tight ends and the receivers uh, for them to throw to? Yeah, um, you know, in, in the receiving game, we've got a few guys that are battle tested, right, that have played. I think, you know, you've got Rob Williams, who had a really good year for us last year. Jacob Bernard, who's been around here a long time, had his breakout year last year. Uh, Harvey Broussard, who as a true freshman, I think really just is scratching the surface of what he's going to be for us. And you've seen tremendous improvement from here and him in year two, as you expect. Uh, and Terrence Carter at tight end. You know, those four guys have made plays for us in the past game and done a really good job. I think behind that, you know, you have Lance Lejean, who this will be his first chance to really go out there and do it. Um, he's got everything that he needs to be really successful. He's had a great summer. Um, he's a guy that we're you know, we're counting on coming out there and playing well. Jaden Johnson is another one who's played sparingly for us. It's his time to play a bigger role. Uh, you know, you add Tavion Smith into the mix, uh, who's a senior for us from a uh, JUCO transfer from a couple years back. He played a little bit for us last year. He's going to have to step up and grow in that role. And I think at tight end, you know, you, you've got two more young guys behind Terrence that I think in the pass game and in the run game can really affect us. But, uh, you know, Ty Stamey, Caden Jensen, um, those are the young guys that you haven't seen a lot of yet. Uh, and I think, as always, it's always good when you have those veterans that have made plays. They've been out there in clutch situations. Those are the guys that you lean on, particularly earlier in the year, while the younger ones who haven't proven themselves yet are making plays or adjusting or getting themselves in position to be able to go out there and impact our team. Uh, but before you really know that they can do it and see them do it, you can take pressure off of those guys with some of the veterans that have been there. Emmanuel Pepe, Summit Conference. Uh, Coach, you talked about Chandler Fields' uh, development in the spring. What are some of the things that stood out in particular about um, his offseason? And as you evaluate the quarterback room in total, what are some of the biggest strengths going into this season? Well, I think for Chandler, he's a guy that you've seen grow a lot in a leadership role. Uh, he got here and he was behind, you know, a, a guy that's one of the all-time best quarterbacks we've ever had here, you know, in Levi Lewis. And he kind of always took a back seat to that. And Levi was the unquestioned leader in there. And Chandler, what I've seen in him in the last really year and a half is I've seen him grow into that role and say, look, it's, it's time for me to do this. He played great for us on the back half of last year. He was a big part in us being able to get a bowl berth um, and getting into a bowl game. I think this spring he took it and really ran with it. And I think his advantages are that he's been in it. I think his advantages over Ben right now are that he's been in the system. He's been taking these reps. He's been doing it consistently, you know, all the way through the year. Um, and that's he's got to take advantage of those things that he's got. And, um, you know, I think we've got we're lucky to be in the situation where we're in, where we've got two veteran quarterbacks that have won games for us that have played really well for us at times. Uh, it's two guys that I really believe our staff believes in. I think our team believes in them. Um, and whoever ends up winning this job coming out of camp is going to put us in position to go out there and play winning football. AJ, talk about y'all have got a new offensive line coach or one of them, and um, coach talked about winning close games. Talk about when y'all run the football, y'all typically win. The, the, the approach of the new offensive line coach and the responsibility of the offensive line to, to win those close games. Um, when Coach Farmer came in, you know, he uh, expressed to us how close we were in the run game to being very elite. And he wanted to uh, find, like, fine tune the things that we were doing to make us the, to to get to the elite level. So um, he came in, changed a couple of techniques, and um, showed us a couple of different things of why we weren't as successful as we could have been in the past. And we've worked on that all spring and all off season to get better. And um, it's just you know just fine tuning the things that we were doing and building off of it. And that's how we um, are going to have a successful run game this season. Coach, Cody Juno, Louisiana Radio. Um, Kevin kind of just talked about the run game a little bit. When the program has been at its best, it's been able to, to run the football, and, and for AJ as well. Is that a mindset? How do you get back to being more consistent running the football? Well, I think for three years, it's kind of what we've been working is to kind of uh, recreate the blueprint of some of our most successful teams. And offensively, it starts with having a really talented guy up front, you know, offensive line, having depth there um, and creating, you know, a backfield where you have a number of guys that can share the load. Um, you know, I mean, the nature of the game is that you're going to have guys in and out week to week. You're going to have guys that aren't 100% week to week. And I think when you can share the load at running back, that helps. 
I think when you have depth on the offensive line, that helps. Um, so for us, it's been you know a work in progress to try to get to that point and recreate that. Um, I, I believe this, no matter what, at some point to win a game, you're going to have to run the football to run the clock out. At some point to win a game on defense, you're going to have to get a stop in the run game. You're going to have to stop the run. I think it makes everything better on third downs. It makes them more manageable. In the red zone, when they have to throw it and that field's condensed, it makes you better there. So running the ball and stopping the run, it's definitely a mindset. It's something that for us, our most successful teams, that's what it's been. Um, we did a self-study in the last two years, right? And we talked about all these close games, you know, from 13 and one in one possession games to two and eight. There's a difference. Well, a key stat for us is when our running backs have 30 carries or more and have, our running backs have 165 more yards or more on the ground, we've won those games. Short of that, doesn't matter if the rushing yards came from someone else or, you know, in any other capacity, if they didn't get enough touches, whatever it was, our record was, you know, was up and down. And pass yards, truthfully, didn't matter. Throw for more, throw for less, that had no effect on our wins and losses in the last two years. So there's something to that. I think it's a mindset for our team. I think we feed off of it. Um, everyone on the offensive side of the ball is responsible for for the run game. I mean, our receivers block down the field. We don't RPO every single play. They go down the field, they block. Our tight ends are very important in the run game for us. Um, and certainly, you know, up front, you know, you got to move people and you got to get movement as a staff. You got to try to get your guys in advantage runs where the numbers are good, the angles are good. Um, but it starts up front. It's a mindset that you have to have, and it's something that we're hell-bent on being able to run the football and stop the run. Got a Zoom question for KC and also for Coach. Your defense had three players make the preseason all-conference team. How has that defensive unit looked during all-season drills? Uh, it looked great, honestly, just to see everyone take that next step, that next level, especially in the DB room, the D-line room, take that next level, not only on the field, but as a leader, just watching them grow as leaders, you know, because – I always tell the guys, like, once you become a, a player led, uh, a player position put together leader, like if players are teach, choosing to be a leader, you don't have that choice anymore to uh, not be vocal. So just watching guys grow from just um, being uh, demonstrating leaders to vocal leaders is just the biggest thing for us as a defense and communication on on all ends of the of the defense, and it's been fun to see. Yeah, I think the thing that you see is. And I think what kind of puts you in that position to go along with KC says is last year we had so many guys on defense that it was their first opportunity to play a critical role for us. And, and they were worried about, you know, doing their 111th, which is what you have to do. Um, but it was almost like we were all kind of 11 individual pieces trying to do their jobs instead of communicating at a really high level. And I think as you become confident, and confidence comes from doing, all right? And, and both of these guys up here played a lot of football, and they can tell you, the growth, the more snaps that you get, the more confident you are, the better that you play. That confidence comes from doing. And as you more and more confident, you communicate at a higher level, you play faster, you understand your role within that defense and how it fits the other 10 pieces. And that's whenever you're allowed to play really fast. And, um, you know, those guys this year, you can see, it looks like a more veteran group on defense, um, even with new schemes and things like that. Football is still football. Um, you got to fit the run. You got to be gap sound. Everyone runs the same coverages. It's who runs them better. And uh, for us, it's a spot where you feel like the experience, you can already kind of feel like it's paying dividends just throughout spring practice and even summer practices. Coach, last year in August, there was a lot of talk about the defensive front. And by the end of the year, it was pretty depleted. And y'all were just trying to hang in there. How can that be different this year? Well, I, I think. With our defensive front last year, we were, um, to start the year, we were kind of fringy, undersized, you know, I would say, to put it lightly. Um, throughout the course of the year, I think we struggled to maintain our weight. Um, had a couple injuries and guys in and out there, and I think the depth hurt a little bit. For us, that's been a focus from the very beginning since January, was we need to get these guys to a weight that they can go play at with a lot of confidence and have an effect on the game. And we have to have a plan to maintain, monitor, and make sure that we can keep their weight where it needs to be. I mean, certain point in time where you got to be big enough. I mean, it's a big man's game in the trenches, and you got to be big enough to handle it up there. Um, so there's that. 
Um, on top of that, we added a couple of pieces that I think are going to be key pieces in helping us stop the run, you know, with Fitzgerald West as an interior D lineman, um, with Kyron Mims, who's a, you know, a true nose tackle. Um, and then, you know, Ashley Williams as an edge player that can play in, he can play on the edge. Um, you know, uh, Trey Fight, you know, has been there. He's going to be a year more experienced, be able to play off the edge. Jaden Duggar, some of these guys. So we've added some pieces there on the front. Uh, we have good pass rushers, and that showed last year. Uh, the problem with pass rushers is you have to earn the opportunity to rush the passer, and you have to stop the run on first and second down. You have to create negative plays to get them in passing situations. So towards the end of the year, that's where we struggled with our first and second down efficiency, and you got to some downs where teams that typically they're going to throw it on third and four, and it's hard to run it for four on third and four. They were running it on third and four and having success, and um, – it's because we didn't do a good job, a good, good enough job with our run efficiency in first and second down, so they felt good about doing it on third down. So um, we've addressed some of those issues through recruiting, um, but certainly we have good players there uh, that we've got to do a good job of, of getting them physically where they need to be. Uh, and I think, again, as you get older, you understand the importance of taking care of your body. You understand that that's, that's your tools. I mean, that, that is your livelihood. That is what helps you to be successful. So um, you've seen those guys take some ownership in that area as well. This question's for, uh, for Casey. Uh, there was a video that uh, UL had recently just posted of you playing the college football game and wanted to get your thoughts, of, of course, uh, about the game itself and have there been any kind of uh, fun battles within the, within the team since then? Oh, yeah. It was a, it's an amazing game. You know, the details are so keen on that game. Like, I, I remember playing the game and I seen our new stadium, like, to a T, oh, the details on it were beautiful. So, and just the gameplay itself is just amazing. It's just, it's fun just to have that, because uh, all of us as in the locker room were playing that as a little kid. So it was awesome to just have that in the game. But also, you know, it's just, a, it's just a fun way to release some stress as a team. But I mean, right now, I think I haven't beat Corden Flowers yet. I haven't beat uh, Caleb Anderson yet. Those guys right there are on a whole different level. Bill Davis too is on a whole different level. I don't play the game often, but, man, those guys are just, you know, <laughs> on a different level when it comes to the game. Got a Zoom question for Coach, but also both of the guys, if you'd like to, along that same role since he mentioned it. Uh, how important is it this year to have the new stadium actually under construction? Uh, I'll go first. I, I mean, I think it's critically important as someone who's been around UL, you know, my whole life. Um, my whole professional life, I mean, since I played and coached and everything, to be in the Lafayette area and to know how long this has been in the making. Um, you know, I think when you have a project like that, it takes a lot of people to make it work. So uh, to get this thing well underway right now, it shows the commitment from the community to our university and to our football program. Uh, I think, you know, I know for myself and for our staff and, and hopefully for our players, you know, it's exciting to get to be a part of history uh, and it's not very often that you get to be a part of a new stadium. So for us, I think it's very important. I mean, in recruiting, I mean, people, you can see the excitement when they kind of see that progress as well. But, uh, you know, for us, I think it's very important. And I'm, I'm sure these guys can kind of touch on how they feel about it. Yeah, I feel like it's a very important thing. Um, you know, when I was getting recruited to UL, that was one of the um, talking points about a new stadium. And though I won't be able to play in it, it's going to be good to come back as an alumni to see the new stadium and, you know, watch some Cajun football. Yeah, I think it's, it's amazing just to see uh, the day-to-day -day progress has been made over there. And it's, uh, like he said, I won't be able to play in it, but it's amazing just to know that I'll be able to come back and just experience that as a true fan, as a true alumni. Dominic Crusetto, College Football Dogs and Sunbelt Syndicate. Uh, Coach, can you talk about the evolution of uh, lunch and uh, Winfield and what he's doing behind Ben and Chandler as he continues to evolve as a quarterback. I know there was a lot of excitement in his, as his recruitment uh, became official to you guys. Lunch is a guy that, that I think is, he's one of those guys that he's just a winner and he's ultra competitive. You know, for us last year, you know, we got to the point where, I mean, there was never any plans for him to be in the game plan at all, to be in that mix, you know, with the guys that we had and the experience we had. Um, and then all of a sudden that changed pretty quick. And then that was when I think I really realized 
how intelligent he was as a football player, how much he really understood of our offense, even as a true freshman who had just gotten there in June. Um, and you got to see him in those game plan weeks go out there and execute and function really well where, you know, we knew if we had to play him at the end of the year, we could have went in there and ran most of our offense with him as a true freshman. Uh, this spring, I think he started out great this spring. Had a couple of uh, arm injuries. It's nothing that's that surgical or anything. Just kind of overuse stuff that we've kind of had to manage a little bit. Um, but whenever he's healthy, he's got all the tools that he needs. He has a presence about him, um, a confidence about him that you love. Uh, and to me, I think he's exactly what you want in this program. And I think, you know, we've got two young guys right now with him and Daniel Beal um, that Daniel's just getting there as a true freshman. I mean, that battle to me is just as important for the future of our program as, as Chandler and Ben are for, for, the, for this year. Um, you know, and I think you watch those guys, the way they prepare, uh, you know, they're very, very mature, you know, for being young players, for being a redshirt freshman, a true freshman. And, uh, you know, that's kind of – those are the types of things that I think that maturity at quarterback has to be different. You know, they can't just be one of the guys – um, they have to have something that separates them, and lunch has certainly got that type of maturity that separates them. Coach, looking into the schedule, week three at Tulane, that matchup already got a little bit of national headlines throughout the summer because of the, the cheap beer conversation throughout Twitter that made it all the way to Pat McAfee's show. But just looking at it on the surface, two Louisiana teams duking it out in the heart of Lafayette, what does that mean for a coach like you and the players to be able to represent the city of Lafayette against one of the strongest teams in the state? Well, I'll, I'll let these guys answer for them, but I'll say for me, um, it means a lot. You know, um, you recruit against these guys um, day in and day out. You know, you battle for it. Um, for players, uh, you battle for recognition. I think it's great that we're playing in state schools like that. I wish we did it every year. Um, I'm not scared to play any of those guys. I think it's a good thing for us. I think the more that you play, I think, you know, it's black and white, right? There is no, well, we would have beat them, they would have beat us. No, it's happened. Uh, for us, it's a really good football team. They've had a lot of success the last couple of years. Uh, Coach Summerall, we're very familiar with him, have a lot of respect for him and what he did at Troy. Uh, you know, but for us, it's one that certainly, uh, it means a lot to me as a Louisiana guy to be able to play these games. Um, and you know, for a lot of different reasons. But I think a big part of it is in recruiting. And certainly, whenever you play someone from in-state at your place, um, it's a game that, you know, it feels like a little bit more than just a non-conference game. It feels more like a conference game, and it feels like something that just means a little bit more. So, uh, got a lot of work to do before we get to the third game of the year. Uh, but certainly, it's one that I'm excited about for us for a lot of different reasons. And, um, you know, I think our guys will be too, but I'll let them kind of touch on the in-state deal. Uh, no, it, it's, it's definitely exciting just to see the um, uh, uh, progress and the, what they've done the past two years, just uh, accept the challenge as a, as a player, you know. I'm exci just excited to play against them, just see how, who, how, what they bring and who they are. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, like Coach Diaz says, in, you know, um, in-state robberies and stuff like that, you know, there's two teams that I've watched as a kid growing up and stuff like that. You know, you, you get to talk the buzz about who's the best. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for both teams to come out and show who they are. And, you know, for, uh, hopefully the Cages end up on top. I know we will. For, uh, for AJ and, uh, and KC, um, UL has enjoyed a lot of history and tradition in not just football, but uh, many sports across the board. Uh, to you guys, what does it mean to be able to, to represent not only uh, this school, but, uh, but a, such a fervent and vibrant community in Lafayette? Um, it's a great opportunity um, to represent the culture. You know, the whole city of Lafayette has a lot of culture, and I know you, people say that all the time, but, like, it's truly a different culture in Lafayette. Like, and for us to be able to go out and have Louisiana on our jerseys and represent the culture, it means everything to me because it's been nothing but love ever since I've been in Lafayette. Yeah, it's, it's truly like a, a group of genuine people, like authentic people, you know. It's amazing just to be a part of the culture, you know, coming from my culture as well. And just being able to be held and grabbed by open arms by everybody, just accept it is just amazing. With no more questions in the room, Coach, AJ, KC, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Good luck to you this season. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you.
This concludes our 2024 Sunbelt Conference Football Media Days. For those of you here in the room, please feel free to stay here in your main work room, do whatever work you need. And if you need any assistance, please